some patients need to realize if they have silicone gel implants placed that they are going to have to have MRIs every two to three years. And that's not always covered by insurance and that can be expensive. A lot of patients come to me not knowing what they should know before they undergo breast augmentation. Well, first of all, the patient needs to realize that once they do a breast enhancement surgery, it's not a lifetime device, that those implants are gonna to have to be replaced somewhere down the line. So once you have your first augmentation, realize that you will have to have another surgery down the road. Reasons to have to reoperate will mostly include scar tissue formation or capsular contracture around the implant, or secondly, rupture or deflation of the implants. Again, these are not lifetime devices. They don't last forever. They can last anywhere between eight and 15 years, and you need to realize that they're going to rupture or that they're gonna crack with time. The patients need to realize if they have silicone gel implants placed, that they are going to have to have MRIs every two to three years, and that's not always covered by insurance, and that can be expensive. The reason for the MRI is when the silicone implant ruptures, it's called a silent rupture, which means you don't know that it's broken because it just sits there. And the shell can be cracked without anybody knowing that there's actually a broke, broken implant. And another interesting fact is that mammography, when you have silicone implants, is often presented with false negative results, meaning that they'll say this woman's implants are intact with silicone and it's actually ruptured. With respect to other things that a woman should know, for the larger the implant, the more gravitational descent, the greater the chance that the skin is going to stretch out. And with time, you may end up needing a breast lift. So be careful about going too large on your first augmentation. My biggest concerns after surgery are prevention of bleeding and infection. To prevent bleeding, I do not allow my patients to raise their arm above their shoulder for four weeks. My concern is that the patients can tear small branches of the, of the arteries that are within the uh, pocket that is created and that could cause a hematoma, which is bleeding, which may require another surgery. The second problem is infection. My patients are instructed that they may not get the incisions wet for 14 days. Patients ask, when can I start exercising again? So it's usually four to six weeks before our patients who have had subpectral implants can go ahead back to working out. Our patients ask to go back to work. If they don't do any type of labor intensive work, we allow our patients to go back in five working days.